Hi, I'm Andy Buchanan. With the ban on international travel, we here in Africa have had to rely heavily on local support to keep the safari industry going. So this week, we'll be joining Alex and David Smith, two Zimbabwean brothers with a rich family history in hunting. They'll be guided by professional hunter York Marais in the wild and unfenced area of Nyavasha, which borders the world-famous Gonorazo National Park. We'll be hunting for Cape Buffalo, where TIA will give you an inside view into how the locals do it. Swift Bullet Company presents This is Africa. Closed captioning is provided by 5H Shooting Sports. It's uh, half past five in the morning, and anyone who's ever been on safari will know what time it is. Rise and shine, it's Tiger Boy time. We've got our checker here, Robert, Robert Moyle. He, he, he's now he's now in his 70s. We've hunted. He's hunted with my old man for 40 years, um, and he's been hunting with me for 25 years. He's seen a few things. Uh, I'm sure he'll tell you a story or two. Robert, morning. Yeah. how are you this morning? Very well. How, how are you camera? feeling? Yeah? What did you do dream today? <laughs> yeah, we dream that we are going to go collect a uh, buffalo. <laughs> Grabbing the tail, yeah. That's why I'm having a, 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 this uh, scoff. Scoff. <laughs> yeah, now I'm strong. Anyway, anyhow. In terms of hunts that Robert's been with me on, I would say nearly all of them. Um, obviously, in the latter years, he stays on the car in the last three years or so. But yeah, I've got Robert's been on us. I think I'll, you'll see a picture of a bushbuck. Um, I'm there with Alex and with Robert. I'm sure you'll see him in the picture there. My dad was always very strict, um, especially on me, that you know you start with Impala, Warthog, and you work your way up. So I actually worked my way right up from from the bottom, and 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 worked up towards you know your wildebeest, your zebra, your kudu, that sort of stage. I don't actually know what else to put into that category, but it's like an eland is a is a jump between your bigger plains game and your, your buffalo, if you know what I'm saying. Um, and then obviously you get onto your buffalo and your leopard, your lion, that's pretty much the cherry on the cake, right from Impala to a lion. Yeah, he's just, he's, even out of the hunting world, he's, he's always been a great presence and, and he's part of the family, actually. We've got some fresh spore crossing our tracks from last night. So these seven Duggar boys which come in to drink we're obviously just going to have a look around and see which way they went out. Um, this is the weapon I'm going to be using today, 416 Rigby. Beautifully weighted gun. Um, I've shot a lot of buffalo with this gun and I trust it all heartedly. Looking forward to it. First hunt of 2020. <laughs> First hunt in like six months. You might have to help me on judging what a buffalo looks like. <laughs> I think after sitting at home for so long and not doing what you used to do 180 days of the year, yeah, it's amazing to get back into what you love doing and your whole team and to see the excitement on everyone's faces when you get your first buffalo track, yeah, it's awesome. So these buffalo have been lying down through the day, but as the sun moves, the shadows move, they move with the sun, so they're going to move around and look for shade. Hopefully we'll catch them soon. Boot scooting, for me personally, everyone's got their different techniques, but personally, boot scooting, it gets you really low. And because you're moving so slow, 
you're eliminating a lot of that fast movement that the buffalo could pick up on. It's a lot easier just to control yourself. It's gonna go slow like this. I'm gonna get to that turmoil mount, in other words, Yeah, being quiet on buffalo or on any animal is very important because it takes you so much time and your tracker's time getting up to them eventually. And it just takes one mistake and they'll be out of there and then you got another two hour, three hour walk. Slow is too fast on Dugger Boys. This segment was brought to you by the Houston Safari Club Foundation. The bullet, the least expensive, most important part of your hunt. It's the only contact you have with the animal. Swift bonded core technology provides great accuracy, controlled expansion, high weight retention, and deadly terminal performance. Swift A-Frame, Scirocco, and the new Breakaway Solid. All bullets without equal. Available in components and loaded ammunition. Contact SwiftBullets.com for product availability. So the biggest thing that we also look at too here at Woodberries is it doesn't matter what type of animal it is or the size of that animal. Everybody brought it here because it's important to them. You know, when we're doing life size stuff with habitat with grasses and bases and the wood that's there and the dirt that's there, all of those little bitty details make a huge difference in the end product. I guarantee you that you'll have it for life. This segment is brought to you by African Sporting Creations. I personally never had a count on three at the same time. From what I could see, it's quite difficult. As hunting is diff difficult enough to get one gun into a position to shoot. So to get both into a position is very difficult. It challenges us even more. It makes it more of a thrill because on three you must be ready. You're relying on another person to also be ready. People count at different speeds. Animals move. Well done, boys. Okay, walk, well, come, come around. Wait, 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 Make sure everyone's on safe. Yeah, safe is on. Yeah. So just went down. You both tied. Oh, definitely on the first one. And then you tied on not your second one, but you tied on the third one. I only shot once. I, I finished. Yeah. You just. Yeah. Uh, when I'm with Alex, how we decide who's going to shoot first, um, it depends on the situation. So, yeah, I'm, I may be carrying an open sight, he may be carrying a scope rifle, or, or vice versa. We actually change, change guns um, because Alex was actually in a better position to shoot, to shoot that buffalo with a, with a scoped rifle. Um, where we were standing, I couldn't quite get in there to shoot at exactly the same time. So, you know, I said to him, well then go and shoot and just tell me when you're about to shoot and I'll shoot at the same time. Well done, boys. So the circle's round and it ends up being quite even. So that's just, that's just how we do it. I said to Alex, just hold on because um, I had a bit of twigs in my, in my sights. Um, anyway, they managed to get them out just in the nick of time. So as he shot, shot, and the buffalo just rolled over. Then because he was lying down, he couldn't shoot again. So I sh shot another three times, I think twice of those three. So let's go up and have a look. See, hopefully he's down. You always approach a buffalo when he's down from behind, because when you walk up to him and he, he does decide to get up, it's going to take him a lot more time to get up and spin than him getting up and coming directly straight to you if you had gone from the front. Hey, thanks, Doc. Hold well on, Voiki. Thank you. Good well job, done. guys. Hold well on, well well eh? Hey, well well done, thanks, Doc. Team, is a proper buffalo, good right? tracking, guys. Thank you, guys. Saroa, spray, eh? Yeah, I got it. Come on, duck a boy. That's a proper buffalo. Beautiful buffalo. We shot him well, eh? Yeah, it was good. This is proper, this. Yeah, but he's a beautiful old bull, eh? Take the character in the boss. 
and big bosses. Let's drop it. Yeah. next. Yeah. This is a proper uh, buffalo yeah. bull bus. So the buffalo was lying down and he was quite nervous of everything. I think obviously he'd heard some movement. So Alex used the 375 with the scope and managed to squeeze one in into his chest. Went through the top of the leg here and into his chest cavity. And then Cherik did a backup shot almost Im immediately afterwards and hit it in the, in the neck, which I think is what rolled it over because it went under the spine. But yeah, beautiful buffalo. Naivasha strikes again. This is uh, exactly the sort of buffalo we were looking for, eh? Um, an old, an old guy with a lot of character. You can see the bosses are chipped. His tips are rounded. He's, he's a beautiful old bull. White face. He is torn up, um, and just such a fantastic hunt. I mean, we called in with York, and uh, thanks so much, York. Your, your knowledge and expertise are, are second to none, man. And when we got in close, obviously pushed us forward. We wanted to shoot together as we usually do. The, the, the circumstances don't always allow. But this time we sort of, as quietly as we could, I got down low, David got up above me. And uh, what we do is when the first person's ready, they shoot. And then I was ready, I was on his shoulder nicely, which, which seems to have gone into the lung area. And then David put another one straight into him, as he always does, very quickly. And uh, he lay down and, and, uh, and, then he, and then he got up and went off, but he, he looked well hit. So, we, I mean, this is a trophy of a lifetime. You can't ask for a better buffalo bull than this. This segment was brought to you by Right On Optics. We are a company of firearms professionals. Hunters, soldiers, officers, and family. As part of the Right on Promise, we provide the best customer service, including an industry-leading warranty. We won't repair, we'll just replace. We believe a person's hard-earned dollar should buy quality optics at any price point. Houston Safari Club Foundation. Our mission, to preserve the sport of hunting through education, conservation, and the promotion of our hunting heritage. Each year we provide outdoor experiences and education for hundreds of high school students. We've proudly awarded $2.4 million in scholarships and funded over $4 million in grants. We exist to serve the hunting and conservation community. We are the Houston Safari Club Foundation. Learn more and join today at wehuntwegive.org. This segment is brought to you by Swift Bullet Company. How often do you find those on the other side of the skin? Almost every time. Swift A-frame. Perfect performance once again. Perfectly, perfectly mushroomed. Great retentions, almost perfect action. Every client that asks me what ammunition should I bring, I always say go with the Swift j -Fan. Never had one fail, never had one break up, they always come out just like this. For me personally, Swifts are right up there at the top because I've never had them fail. They work beautifully every time. They open up their mushroom, they keep their weight retention. You don't ever have the lead coming out and that's what you want as a PH is delivery and performance. Swift. The cheapest, most important part of your hand. <laughs> no, the only contact you have with the animal. The only contact you have with the animal. It's true though, eh? Ah, but... Zimbabweans generally love to hurl abuse at each other. And I think it's even worse among siblings, but it helps to build a bit of a thicker skin. My younger brother <laughs> wants to shoot anything with balls. So we just have to be careful we don't let him loose. I'm very concerned about my younger brother, yeah. Because... He's hunting like he's on a shopping trip in Las Vegas with a beautiful aviator, Zunisex, which he has to keep removing to put the binoculars up and they shine like a Christmas tree out here. I, call, I tell him he's overweight, he tells me my aviators are, are, are bad. So. He's lost so much shape, he should wear a puffy jacket because he looks terrible. I'd be embarrassed if I was insecure. Father, these are my sisters. They're not. Got them for my 18th birthday. 
calls them girls aviators. They'll let the camera know and Andy know that they're actually not. They're unisex aviators, which for those of you who don't know, uh, combined male and female, either can wear them. It's nice to have a bit of banter in the bush and uh, tease them about those ladies aviators. It's uh, lunchtime here in our beautiful Yavasha camp. And you know this wouldn't be this wouldn't be TIA without a bit of trickery. So I've brought along my uh, couple of new friends. So let's lay some traps. Sharon! We did have a lot of fun on this hunt, but let me tell you, we really hunted hard. There were many failed stalks, but that's all part of the fun and the hunting experience. Unfortunately, there's never enough time in one of these episodes. So please know we didn't shoot every single buffalo we stalked. One aiming point is better than two always. We've come up to the furthest water point and there's been a few elephant moving here and in amongst the elephant we found one dug a boy track so we're gonna go and give it a shot. I say bye, go and have a good, nice, lovely day to get to that big, big, big buffalo. Thank you. So this buffalo bull, obviously playing here by the pan, if we find him, he should be caked in mud and bring out the proper name and meaning of a dugger boy. Yeah, York and his team, absolutely. I certainly learned a lot from them in terms of reading the bush, their general hunting practice. The, the natural instinct is, is to, to hurry um, because, you know, you, you want to get your, your quarry as soon as you can. But, you know, just taking it easy, reading the ground, the movement that the animal is doing as, as it goes, whether it be feeding, whether a quick lie down, whether they be playing, were they running from something, just reading and assessing all of those things. This segment was brought to you by Woodbury Taxidermy. We've been building the finest custom hunting rifles for almost 25 years. We have no assembly lines and promise to deliver a rifle that will exceed your expectations Every Hill Country rifle is shot repeatedly in our 100-yard underground range and our accuracy is guaranteed with factory hunting ammunition. This segment is brought to you by Hill Country Rifles. Looks like the way he laid down, he's not too fast on looking back on his track. The track came in, yeah, he laid down looking ahead. So he's not looks doesn't look like he's looking back too much. Flat. No, he was in full sunlight, so he's probably shifted to look for better shade. So this is good. This so is he should be here. Yeah. Oh not now now, but yeah. from this morning. Yeah. yeah. Now when the sun broke the tree line. The other key factor which I, I really liked about York and his team is that they sometimes take into consideration other factors, not just the animal you're you're following. For example, the bird life that's around. What sort of noises are they making? Yeah, the, 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 the main attribute I learned from York Murray and, and his team of trackers was uh, the speed at which they hunt. Um, nice and slow, easy does it, because always in the bush your first chance is your best. All the African wildlife is so wide awake um, at all times, so you want to make sure that you slowly move in, irrespective of how far you may think you are from that animal. The speed at which you approach is absolutely key. It's still warm on the inside. It's got a layer on the top from the sun, but it's still warm on the inside, so we're pretty close to the spot. Oh come, 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 come. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, when he comes on, he's gonna turn to the right. Burr. 
บะรีเลิศรีเลิศคัมคัมคัมคัมคัมคัม We're good shooting, guys. That's right. Don't run. Don't run. Don't run. Yeah, fucking nice. Okay, get to this tree and put it in. Okay. Well done. It's a nice buffalo, guys. Check those bosses, yo. Someone died. The second shot dropped him. I don't know about the first shot, but the second shot dropped it. Started trotting off. The PH made a noise. He stopped and turned, and we both belted him. Bleh. No sticks. Oh, but that's close. 50, 40 yards. 50 yeah. yards. Nice. Check how old and. That's what makes it all worthwhile. After a nice long track, and then you get a beautiful old bull like this. And we've been on buffer every day. Mm -hmm. Full of mud, eh? Channel there. Who's hit this tree here? Yeah. Someone. He was slightly quartering towards us and we've hit him on that front shoulder and it's come all the way through to here. Nearly exited actually. It's broken the skin on the other side. You can actually feel already that this, this round has mushroom beautifully and I mean unbelievable performance and uh, th th this bugger didn't stand any chance with a well-placed shot to the swift airframe. When we when we did when we felt that dung and it was warm there I knew we were getting close I actually said to you Andy um, and then we came around this corner and the trackers were just down and we, you know it wasn't that is that it we knew that you know that's it easier easier and I saw David sort of scampering forward obviously I had to make sure I joined him <laughs> otherwise it was not, not going to be far <laughs> And I mean, I just saw him sort of skulking along the side of the thicket you were talking about, and I was convinced that w that was it. He was going to continue. And then York, I mean, obviously with all of his experience, just made that uh, sort of buffalo bit noise, and he stopped and turned to have a look. And then, um, as we always do, it didn't take long. I asked David if he was ready, and he was. And uh, he shot, and I shot. He went again straight down, which is very unusual for buffalo, but. Um, I think that double tap from a 375 and 416 certainly makes them it takes pay the attention. Wind out of them, yeah. Yeah. Um, there's very good buffalo in this area. Um, we've seen some, I mean, even better than this one. Not that this one's to complain about, but they're certainly around here. Fantastic. So we've, got yeah. we've got another five to shoot, so let's get busy and an elephant. And, and uh, to, ball, yeah. to York and his team. Yeah, uh, huge thank you. I mean, I've, I've hunted between David and I, we've, sh we've shot now 32 buffalo. But I mean, I've learned so much on, on this trip from you guys and your, your, your trackers and, and just a, obviously a professional way of hunting. We obviously did recreationally, but I've, I've learned a hell of a lot. And certainly some of these buffalo alone, I wouldn't have got anywhere near. So thank you to yeah. you guys. Yeah, and thank you. Thank you, York. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Next time on This Is Africa, with only a day and a half to spare, the Smith brothers are given a witch doctor's blessing and take a chance on an enormous bull elephant. Thanks for watching another episode of This Is Africa. Be sure to browse our sponsor links below. We'll see you right here soon for the next episode of This Is Africa.